Today's video is brought to us by PCBWay, but more on them later. Enjoy the video. Hello everybody. Andrew here, Fixology. Sorry it's been so long since the last video. Um, a lot, of, a lot of real world stuff happened, like work and things like that. Had inventory at work, uh, had a guy go on vacation, so had to cover all the times that he was gone. So this is my first off weekend in almost a month, I want to say. So um, sorry I haven't posted as much as I said I'd like to, but sometimes crap just happens. So uh, we're just going to start off right here with a nice easy one. I do have a couple of videos hopefully coming out. Um, this will be the first of a couple. Um, moving that out of the way real quick. So what I got right here is just an iPhone 11, and it has a little bit of a cracked seat in the corner here. It is not affecting, affecting any sort of functionality right now, but it is cracked, and they said they didn't want it cracked anymore. So uh, what we're going to do is start off by removing the penelobes, which at the bottom, these are one of the only things that are holding together an iPhone. Not like the Samsungs would have like 20-some screws on the back, but these ones have this and then some adhesive holding in place. So what I'll do... Is pop them out real quick. These are pretty stuck in there. And eh, they're a little dirty, but nothing horrible. And then I'll put it on my hot plate, which I have it set for about 80 degrees Celsius. 75 to 80 Celsius, so about like 150 to 160 Fahrenheit. Won't cause any damage to the phone as well, and then it'll also make the adhesive nice and loose to work with. So that'll be a plus. So yeah, I'm, again, I'm sorry it's been so long since I posted. Uh, I mean, we all we all have these, and a life gets in the way of things that you want to try and try and get better at, or if you know things you want to do, and that's just what happened here. So life came up, became a pain in the butt, took a little bit of time off. So, um, yeah, but hopefully we'll be back to a more regular schedule. Hopefully I'll be try I'll be trying to put one out every week, um, if not once every other week, um, and we will just keep going from there. So hopefully you guys are all doing well and you guys had a good Labor Day weekend. Um, I unfortunately had to work that Labor Day uh, the whole weekend and it was a kind of a bust, but you know you do what you got to do. So not too worried about it. Um, yeah. So got really nothing else new for me personally. Just working a lot. Yeah, that that's about it. Uh, yeah working and trying to get more videos out for this for you guys so uh thank you to those that do keep supporting and commenting i may not read all the comments but i do read some of them so don't feel like i'm ignoring you or anything like that it's just i just i might not have the energy or the time to actually look at them myself i just some days are worse than others and i just want to go home and sleep and not deal with people and when i say people i mean even myself i don't want to hear myself or talk to myself which is you know pretty much if you think about it it's what you do in a video you're just talking to yourself in hopes that you're not responding back to yourself like a psychopath. Well, you know, hopefully not. <laughs> so uh, I have that on the hot plate right now, so I'll need a few minutes to warm that up. Um, so I will be back once that is nice and heated up, and we will continue with the teardown. Uh, see you guys in a second. Today's sponsor is PCB Way. With more than a decade in the field of PCB prototype and fabrication, they are committed to meeting the needs of our customers from different industries in terms of their quality, delivery, and cost effectiveness, as well as other demanding needs. They are one of the most experienced PCB manufacturers in the area and have always been very good at producing high volume amount of boards for a very reasonable, uh, reasonable price. Feel free to also inquire them about their CNC and 3D printing for you can also make custom shapes, uh, modules, and even uh, little, little devices if you have anything going on for that. Thank you for watching, and we will now get back to the video. Uh, all right, so it's nice and warm now, so we can start by opening it. So we're going to start in the bottom left corner of the device, or in this case, of the way it's orientated, it would be bottom uh, Sorry, bottom left of the device, bottom right, if you're looking at this current camera orientation. So just get a little thing in here. And I don't have my... I don't have my... My little squeeze bottle of alkaline, so I'll, or alcohol, so I'll just dip the pick in this little thing of it. So put my guitar pick in here, and then we're going to run a very small amount of it along the edges, because if there are any sort of flexes, which on this size there aren't, but you just still want to have good habits. 
So all it's going to do is just cut the adhesive and not damage any sort of cables that might be hanging around. Go up to the top. Now on this side, this side has more. This is where it, it, all the cables attach. So for the LCD, for the digitizer, and then also near the top is where the face ID and the front facing camera are. So we're going to go nice and easy. This one, this side is a little tough, is a little tighter. So you will probably pop out a few times. There you go. And then I'm going to orientate it just a little bit. Get a little more alcohol on my pick, which is not the optimal way to do it, but I don't have my freaking pick right, my, uh, my little syringe right now, which I probably should get some extra ones, but whatever. And then nice and easy. All right, and then iPhone 11s, if they're orientated like this, they will open to the right like a book. There we go. But you can see, especially right here and right here, those cables are bent into the corner. So if you're in too deep, you'll easily cut those. And if you cut this cable, you're kind of out of luck. Um, you can replace it so the camera and the speaker works, but the face ID will no longer work because there's a component in here that's paired with this motherboard. So if you do that, there's nothing that you can really do. You Apple, I think, still does fix them, so you can send it directly to them to have them do it, but it's, you know, a couple hundred dollars, and it'll be... And that'll be on top of the screen because they're not going to want to work on it if it's not their screen to replace. You know, they're propi propi proprietary like that. So, and then there is enough flat slack. What you can do is you can lay it down like this, nice and easy. Now, I had my trips here. There it is. This is my PC on them, so I don't know if this is an Apple. This one might have been replaced, might have been uh, repaired before. Oops. Take that off. Ah, oh, man, these are my bent ones. And we're going to take a spudger. And the battery connector is right here. And all we're going to do is go off to the corner here. And give it a little flick. And it should pop right off. There we go. Today's video is brought to us by PCB Way. But more on them later. Enjoy the video. For it's just a little bit, so that way I can access all of them. And these are all the same size, so if you mix them up, it's not the end of the world. But you want to have good habits, so the way you take them off should be the way you put them back in. Even though none of us have x-ray vision, you can see through my hand. I'm not really doing anything special. I'm just taking out five screws that are in the shape of like a, I don't know, like a sideways U or like an E without the middle part. But yeah, definitely after uh, after today, I'm going to throw away this tri-point, and I'm going to get a new one. This is just one of the cheap ones that come with a kit, and at the time, I didn't have one of my good ones. I think there was in my car somewhere, and I don't really want to run out and deal with it. Do I have another one lying around? Nah, it doesn't look like it. Oh well, it is what it is. Take these off, put it up here. All right, so Spudger, we're going to get this one, this one, and then we need to get, I believe it is this one right here. No. Hang on. Yeah, I think it's that guy right there. So going from the bottom for these two is the easiest, and then for this one, just come from the side nice and easy. You only want to flick, feel the lip of the, um, of the connector. You don't want to go down too deep. There we go. All right, so main the board and everything. You don't need it right now, so you just put it off to the side. Okay. And now I need a Phillips because iPhone, for whatever reason, doesn't like to keep the same screws everywhere. So you got a tri-point here and then two Phillips, which I don't have any of those, but luckily, I got a new set. Got a nice new set of Weehaws. Haven't even opened them yet, because I got them like a month ago and I haven't had any repairs, so. Whole new set of Weehaws, and again, it's not sponsored, but I just, I love their screwdrivers. 
The iFixit ones are great too because they're nice and compact and you can put them all into one piece as opposed to carrying like multiples around like this. I just, I've always used Weehaws and I like the way they fit. The, I, the iFixit ones though do have a lot of those weird screws like for Game Boys or MacBooks or, you know, even like some of the weirder ones for iPhones. But, uh, so I need my... <laughs> Alright, so this is my double point. Uh, these ones are a little slightly different. I think these two on the right are the same, but the one on the left is different. So definitely keep these guys the same. And then there's one right up here in this little corner, which hopefully when I zoom in, you'll be able to see, because right now the glare makes it look horrible. But there's one in the corner here. All right, so this one that hasn't been repaired before or they just did a proper thing because what what happens a lot of times is um there's a little little like uh i don't know bracket this piece right here this little bracket here a lot of places don't put this back on which honestly i've had it lost and put it back together and there's no fault i don't know what it's for i think it's just to hold this piece in until you put this piece on top because that's what holds it but you know you want to try and put everything back in that you get so this little piece is always a good indicator if they've replaced it if it's been repaired it's not the bet it's not the guarantee but it's a good indicator because if it's not there then you know it wasn't done by an apple tech or it was a new device because this would always be in there okay now we got to get this part out which we got to be real careful so i like to start with a spudger on the bottom and pop the microphone on the left and then what i'll do is rotate this component right here you can actually take like an angled or just like a regular tweezers and if you're really gentle nice and easy just apply a little bit of pressure Right out there, you go. every time. Never ripped one like that, even though it looks weird. Honestly, I've never ripped one that way. I've ripped it the other way, going from that way first, and then I'll rotate it back, and then I'll go to the right, just nice, easy, twisting it, nice and up. And now it should be enough to pop right off. There we go. So you got your. You got a portion of the face ID in here. You got a light sensor. You got a proximity sensor. You got the loudspeaker and the micro and the ear speaker and a microphone. So, but the main thing is the face ID. If if this gets damaged anyway, you just won't have face ID anymore. You can get the part, but the face ID won't work, which obviously is one of the selling points of the iPhone 10s and newer, which this is an 11, so it's newer. All right, so this is Dunzo. I can put that to the side, and then. Hopefully, get a core charge back for it. All right, so I got this. Okay, new one right here. I always check the flexes. Most of the time, they come fine, but sometimes they're bent weird, so they might cut in. But it doesn't look anything weird happened on this one, so we're fine. All right. Put the broken screen inside of here. That way, I have a nice, easy way to send it back, and then I'll label it later. That way I don't get it mixed up and put it in with the good ones. Actually, you know what? I'll do that right now. Uh, buy back. Uh, OE screen. They pay more for uh, original screens because they can refurbish the LCD. Because they can take apart the... They can separate the screen, the glass part, from the picture part, the LCD. And therefore, it's still... A refurbished Apple part, just the glass on the front is different, which honestly, I on the refurbished ones, outside of the back being different, I can't tell the front being any different, so. Okie dokie, so let's get all of these stickers off of here. They're just for making sure nothing falls out or nothing moves, so. It's smart, a little annoying, but it's smart. I don't know why this one's being so difficult. All 
There we go. All right, cool. Put you back down, you down. Okay. And put you guys off to the side. Perfect. All right, so now we're just going to do all the steps in reverse. So we're going to put the front camera in. I like to start with putting in that small rectangular piece up first, then the one on the right. You'll feel them kind of like push in, like almost click in. You have to move around just a little bit. This is more of a feel than a look, unfortunately, so I can't. Ah, you're gonna be difficult to me, aren't you? Unless it's that rare occurrence where this, where the hole this is supposed to go is actually the wrong size. I've had that happen to me. Doesn't happen often, but I have had it happen. There we go. All right, so just need a little more loving. All right, so snapped in, snap in nice and flat. And then we gotta get that little bracket. Which there is a little metal piece behind it. Yeah. So right there, that piece, you're going to just push it on and then push down. There you go, it's in place. Again, I don't really know what the whole point of it is, except for maybe holding that small component in while you do this. But there's technically one already above it, so I don't, I don't really know, man. It's not my place to tell them how to do their jobs. I can always opinionate on it, but uh, you know, in the end, it's they do what they want to do. And if that's you know, they want to do something to make some things special and unique, and so be it. So put the screws back in the same order they came out. And these are magnetized too, and if they ever become demagnetized, you just gotta get like a little magnet, like these kind of guys. So they got one side that's magnetized, one side that's demagnetized. A lot of tech shops will have something like this. Okay, so we got that. Let's take the body back down. And then we're going to reattach it to test it. So, face ID and camera first. Click. Digitizer and LCD. Click. And the battery will always last. The battery is always the first thing disconnected and the last thing co connected. That way you don't have any problems. Apple logo, already a start. And then I will perform the functions test off, um, probably off camera just so there's no chance of, you know, like customer data showing up on the video or anything like that. People are a little sensitive about that and obviously for good reason. Yeah, so. All right, well, that's always a good sign, so. All right, so, nice good picture. The touch looked like it was working, at least for here, but I will double check it when, I'm, when I am fully done, so. All right. Man, I really wish I had those holders. There's some holders that I've been looking around for that um, hold it up like this while you're working on them, so I, don't, so I can have free up both hands for it. I've become adept at working with just one at a time, but it just makes it more convenient and think it looks, I think it looks a little smoother. But every time I try to find them um, off my wholesale, they're always say notify me when in stock. So I'm thinking one of two things at this point because I've been looking at them for a while. Either they are just that popular and they just get a small amount at a time and they disappear. Or what I'm thinking at this point since it's been like, I don't know, I've been looking at them off and on for like the last year or two. It's most likely the company that sells this particular, this particular one that I look at is bankrupt or doesn't exist anymore. Cause they also make a really cool um, iPad uh, sealer. Like it's basically um, a little tray that you put your iPads into, a little mold, and then you uh, have a little screw down press that goes on top of it. And they're all like rubberized and stuff like that. So they're soft, but yet firm. And then you just twist it down. So it 
pressure so it keeps the pressure on the iPad while it cools off so the adhesive will hold real nice and then you won't have any like weird bubbles or movements or anything like that. And they're not too bad of a price. I mean, I've I am I I did work for a U-brake I fix at one point. This is years ago, but I do remember um we had like a somebody made like a like made a custom one almost out of like out of like 2 by 4 and stuff like that and it worked pretty well. Um, what I just do recently is with iPads, I just take like a weight, like I got some heavy books back here that I use those or like, uh, I don't know, something that's small yet like rectangular dense. So you can either do like two or one big one across the back. So like something that's sort of dense, like tungsten or, uh, small batteries work okay. Like those small ones that you find in, um, uh, like, what am I trying to think? Like, um, UPCs. Or, um, like, little kids' toys, like the Power Wheels. Those actually work pretty well, too. Or even the ones for, like, electric scooters. Those are a pretty decent size. But you don't always have to buy expensive stuff to be good at this job. You just have to be consistent. And that's what I always try to do. Sometimes it doesn't always work out. You know, it's electronics are one of the most finicky things you can ever deal with. Oh, yeah, this thing's fucked. This thing's fucked. Alright, yeah, I'm, after these last two screws, I'm not using it anymore. I'm throwing this one out. I don't think I ruined that screw, but I definitely made it more difficult for the next time it has to be opened. Which hopefully is never. Hopefully by the next time they decide it, they'll just, you know, maybe trade in. I mean, the 11s at this point, they were released in 2018. No, no, no. 2019, so... They're gonna be... Four years old in, is it end of October or are they in November? Hmm. Yeah, but it's like the eights and the X's. Those were released in 18 and those were released a month after each other, which is a weird marketing pitch for Apple, I think. You know, released essentially like nine different iPhones in a month. This doesn't make sense to me at all. All right. So now we got it in here. So now we're going to close it up. So you close from the top first. So just a little bit of an angle so it gets in there. It'll slip right in. And then we work our way down. So we got a nice, nice and seamless here. Um, I don't have the adhesive that goes around the outside of them and honestly the iphone water resistance their claims to water resistant isn't that resistant so it wouldn't i don't think it would make much of a difference um it's a real big pain it's not like a samsung one where you know you can just lay it all out in one area and then good good go it's a very small ledge and the adhesive if you do get the right ones it's really really sticky and very thin so if you mess up, you lose that entire piece pretty much, and you have to do another one. Which, you know, they're fairly inexpensive, but if it takes five or six of them to do just one device, you know, then you're losing all money. And nobody wants that. All right, so I'm just going to quickly clean out the ear speakers and check the... Oh, yep, look at that. Dust bunnies! Oh, yeah. Got a whole family in there. It's something that I do just to, you know, I treat it like my device. So if I notice that's dirty, I'll clean it out real quick for him. And then final thing is I'm just going to give it a... What are you stuck on? Hello? Oh, are you kidding me? Ah, uh, that... Okay, well, that's soft. That one's got glass and a little bit of, plat of rubber roll. Why are you still here? Okay, that was a fortune. That microfiber had a... A, a um an iPad uh, glass attached to it, so it was uh, sticky and covered in glass, uh, shattered glass. So I will use this one instead. So now theirs isn't super dirty, but I'm just gonna give it a quick clean over. Just wipe it down. Don't have any of my cleaner near me, so I can't really use it right now. But just a good wipe down, and that can make it look brand new almost. Look at that sheen. Otherwise, this one is good to go. Uh, the only thing is uh, I'll ask them if they want a screen protector. 
But you guys have seen me do that, and I'm sure I'll do it again on another video eventually. So it's not like it's gonna go out of style. Uh, I'll do that, and uh, yeah, we are we are done here. I'll run through the functions test off off it, and uh, if I did break anything else, I'll add on to the end of this video. But most likely, you will not see me again. So thanks for watching, and again, I will try to be more consistent. Life just sometimes sucks, so you gotta accept that. But otherwise, I will talk to you guys in the next video.